We all know that the Buddha was a noble warrior, so there's no surprise that there are similes in his teachings where he talks about soldiers in battle, elephants in battle, horses trained to help in battle and other, other things that noble warriors would have to do. What we don't appreciate was that the Buddha was also part of a farming culture. The texts talk about his father farming, plowing one day when the Buddha was a young boy. And also there's a passage where his cousins are talking about the, the drawbacks of lay life. And it's basically you have to farm again and again and again. You bring in the crops, then you have to plant them, then you have to bring them in again. There's no end to it. So it's good to think about what that would do to a person's mind, living with crops, being a farmer. And one of the things that you learn as a farmer is patience. You do what you can to get the crops to grow. But then they do the growing. Then you can influence them to some extent. And you have to be consistent in your support. But you have to be very patient about the results. If you plant a rice grain and then a little shoot comes up, if you pull it up to make it longer, it's going to die. There's a similar principle in cooking. Some things you put in the oven, you have to put them in at a very low temperature. If you want them done and fit quickly and you turn up the temperature, you burn them. So in our culture, which tends to be very impatient, we have to learn patience. And there's no quick solution. You have to keep coming back, coming back, coming back, and learning how to talk to yourself as you're doing this. When you're trying to get the mind still and it won't get still, you give yourself encouragement. Tell yourself you focus on the causes. You keep coming back to them, coming back to them, coming back to them, and after a while they will begin to have an imprint on the mind, an influence on the mind. And we can't tell beforehand who's going to be fast, who's going to be slow. As John Lee says, some people are like banana trees. You cut them and they grow a couple inches within a couple hours. Other trees are much slower. So whether you're going to be a fast tree or a slow tree, you can't determine. You can. Make sure, however, that you are a healthy tree and try to keep encouraging yourself. This has to do with dealing with, both with unskillful qualities that you see in yourself and with skillful qualities that make you impatient. With the unskillful qualities, you have to remember the principle that you don't just sit there and accept them. You accept the fact that they're there. You don't deny it. But that's not the total solution to the problem. There's so much modern Dharma where they say, well, just learn how to accept things. Be radical in your acceptance and that'll be okay. But the Buddha said you don't accept the fact that you have greed, aversion, and delusion in your mind, and that they're going to stay there. You accept the fact that they're there, but you want to do something about them. But they're going to take time, because their roots are deep. They're old habits. You've been letting them run your lives for how many lives? We don't know. So this is what the Buddha says, you take delight in abandoning and delight in developing. That means each little step in the right direction, you learn to encourage yourself, appreciate it. Each step in the wrong direction, you tell yourself, well, this is just a temporary setback. You have to dial your emotions. I know a therapist who worked with kids in a school for delinquents, and she asked them to rate on a scale of one to ten different negative things that could happen in their lives. And for most of them, was, everything was a ten, ten, ten. Your brother gets stabbed, ten. You've got a date, you can't figure out which dress to wear, ten. That attitude makes everything into a crisis. So you have to realize that some things are minor, some things are major. And your ability to make things minor, in other words, to see even a setback, that's not such a big deal. It's an important mental skill. Patience is a skill. 
and learning how to talk to yourself, learning how to give yourself encouragement. Remind yourself that what you're experiencing right now is a combination of past habits and present habits, present actions. Those past habits may be very strong, but they're not consistently strong. And because it's past karma, it's going to wear out someday. But you can speed up the process a little bit by being as skillful as you can in your breathing, in how you talk to yourself. and the perceptions you hold in mind, those three fabrications. So keeping the image of farming in mind, of plants growing, is one useful perception to help with the process. As for skillful qualities, they're actually getting in the way. A lot of it, is, again, is impatience. As Jean Fung used to say, there are two types of people coming to meditation, those who don't think enough and those who think too much. Those who don't think enough don't have much trouble getting the mind to settle down. But once it's settled down, they don't know what to do with it. And they like to stay right there. Those who think too much like to, th like to think and are proud of their thinking, are entertained by their thinking. The other ones have to learn how to be quiet and let the mind grow at its pace. Again, it's like a tree or a plant that you've planted in a field. You tend to it, but the plant's going to do the growing. And if you want to get everything all figured out ahead of time, what you get is what John Lee calls Vipassana sanya. In other words, ideas about insight, but not the genuine thing. As the Buddha said, if, you, if you're good at insight but weak in tranquility, you've got to work on the tranquility. Figure out how to get the mind to settle down, how to get it to enjoy staying here. Part of that has to do with talking to yourself about it. And the other part has to do with learning how to talk to your impatience. We're so used to living with computers, and they move their ones and zeros around really fast. But the mind isn't composed of ones and zeros. It's more organic. Again, think of the tree, especially a large tree. It's got lots of different branches to grow. may have to nourish lots of fruits. So it's going to take time. So here again, learn how to talk to yourself. Remind yourself there are a lot of things that you can't figure out ahead of time. You're going to learn as you feel your way. And as you get a better intuitive sense of what's going on, then you can know where to push, where not to push. Again, like the farmer. The farmer knows not to pull the plant up out of the ground. But the farmer also knows when to water, when to put fertilizer in, when to weed. And even though it may be repetitive, you have confidence that the results are going to be good. Again, you remind yourself, if you don't train your mind, and part of training the mind, of course, is getting it to be really still, it's just going to go back to its old habits. Here you're going to learn something new, create something new, grow something new. So learn how to be patient when you need to be patient. And the patience here goes together with persistence. We know the Buddha said to be heedful, to act as if your head were on fire. So learn to translate that into a consistent persistence.
but don't bash your head trying to put the fire out. 